Now, let's close out the episode on potentially an even crazier story. Uh, this one is about the former NAIA Player of the Year, just this last year, going to perform at a Big Ten camp. And that's just something that, like, it caught me off guard 100%. I did not expect this at all. Jalen Gramstad, he's the quarterback from Northwestern, a team that, once again, we've talked about a lot on this show. I wonder why. Because they win football games. They win a lot of them. He worked out at Nebraska, of all places, over there in the Big Ten at the Big Red, maybe trying to keep the same color scheme as you see here, trying to keep that color going. He might like the way he looks in it. But uh, he worked out in Nebraska, and it just, for me, is... As someone who, you know, sees a lot of guys make that jump, it was just a very interesting story. Not one that I expected, I think, at all. And so that was, again, why it kind of caught me off guard. Um, But they received uh, a pleasant surprise over there in Nebraska when he walked in and started competing at camp. Like I said, it was the NAI Football Player of the Year, and uh, it was a postgraduate football camp at their indoor center. He's six foot, 190 pounds. And so that's kind of the first, I think, if you're – Looking at that and how he scales to a Division One level, especially a Power Four level, six foot one ninety at the quarterback position is not typically going to cut it for a lot of squads. But I will say, anyone who's watched this dude play on the football field knows that he has every intangible, and he's also just a very gifted athlete and gifted football player. So has that going for him. The size certainly is not there. So they won a national championship, not this year, but last twenty twenty two. They made it to the national championship in 2023, lost to Kaiser in a, in a pretty uh, pretty awesome game. And uh, in 2022, it looks like uh, 247 yards, three tuds in the natty, ran for 156 and scored. That's ridiculous. There's your stat right there uh, for anyone doubting. That's <laughs> That's so crazy. Uh, His first full season as a starter, it was an NAIA best 3,681 yards and 35 touchdowns that's combined. Uh, that's uh, by the way on 68% passes through just 9 interceptions. That's pretty good. Uh that was uh, by the way that's my bad. That is just passing. The th- 3600 or 3700 is just passing. Also ran for 772. Like this is it's ridiculous. He's amassed let's see the math here. Over 8000 yards total and 90 touchdowns in his career at Northwestern College. <sighs> What makes the story even crazier, too, is that at the Nebraska camp, there was a conference rival, Midland University, is also in, I believe that's the GPAC, if I'm not mistaken. They had multiple coaches working the camp, and imagine, right, you know, to make an example of, like, GV and Ferris, say Grand Valley is at a Michigan State camp, and a Ferris quarterback, you know, uh, why am I going to, I'm going to blank on the name now of all times, Carson Golker shows up to the to the camp, and uh, Wooster sitting there like, holy shit! What are you? What are you doing here? You're <laughs> like, what? Could you imagine being a rival coach at a camp where you have no anticipation of seeing anyone that you played against the last year? In walks probably the dude that gave your defense fits for the last three to four years. <laughs> and you're just sitting there like, what? Oh, that just makes the story uh, even more interesting. Um, Freshman quarterback Dylan Rayola was also present during that workout, so I guess it wasn't strictly a postgraduate workout. And that the question marks have been all over, you know, their quarterback room. I think in Nebraska, and I'm not really someone who follows big time football that much, but I know that that get getting Dylan there, that quarterback is a five star. I believe he is slated to be the next big thing for Big Red up there. Um, it says here that he slipped while running his 40 yard dash, so didn't appear to have the best time. But uh, arm talent apparently looked really good. He's got one season of eligibility, also has a redshirt year, so he can play up to, say he commits to Nebraska, right in this hypothetical that we're living in right now, you and I. He commits to Nebraska. He could play in four years, still get the redshirt, and then come back. Don't know if that's what he wants to do, but there's a possibility for him. So a lot of things that uh, could go on here. And uh, he said, it said here that he was seen walking into the weight room area with the Husker coaching staff after the camp. So you'd imagine that there's pretty good interest on their end. And, and why shouldn't there be, right? This is a dude that has accomplished almost everything you can accomplish. I think it's safe to say at the NAI level. So I don't think it's a stretch at all to to say that, you know, I'm not gonna, they're not going to offer him a scholarship on, on the on site. But it's not a stretch to say that that these guys are going to have a great level of interest in, uh, in Gramstad. I'll pull up uh, a few of the highlights here for the, the former player of the year because I think you guys just have to kind of see to appreciate the stuff that this guy does in between the white lines on a football field. Um, 
He does a lot. He does a lot for this squad, and I'll show you here just a few of them. But for me, this is just interesting from a lot of perspectives, not something that um, you see too often. He is also a guy that started his career in 2020, so that COVID year being factored into things, we've seen a lot of this of people, which that snow game against Morningside, by the way, that's so ridiculously awesome. But um, short sleeves also. But um, it's not something that's super, super extraordinary because – a lot of those guys who came in 2020 get that extra year. He's a guy who's finished his degree at Northwestern. And again, it's all about when you graduate and get that degree, that's when you see a lot of these guys go and seek other potential opportunities, usually trying to make that jump and see because he's obviously dominated at this NAI level. Can I go, can I go do that, excuse me, and do it at the next level? Do it at a Power 4 conference like the Big Ten? That, I think, is the question mark for him. If he decides to do that, awesome. If he doesn't, awesome. If he goes somewhere else, maybe a lower-level D1, or even to a big-time Division II or NAIA squad, I, I wouldn't be surprised. He could. I would assume he's going to try and make the jump up to a D2 or D1 level, but you never know. So that's kind of the scoop on that. Really exciting stuff there, and, and I'm anxious to see where that ends up. But